Hi, Liv. How are you today? Hi, Linda. And Sharona, hello. Hi, Jen. Thought it was about time I popped in again. Hope you guys all had a... And there's another Jen. <laughs> Leah. Oh, Linda, you're at work. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. How is everybody? I hope you all had a wonderful, wonderful Christmas and New Year's. Yes, Liv, I don't think I've seen you here before, so I'm glad you joined us. And for those of you that have been here before, hi, Gail. For those of you that have been here before, you're probably going, no, wait, what is she doing? What is she doing? Well, what I'm doing is, uh-oh, first of all, not watching what I'm doing because I just caught my tail end in my stitches. Um, all you guys that are doing cross country in your diagonal, now that I have to frog this, have made me want to try it. So today, see, I told you guys, I'm always trying to do new things and try different things. So today I'm going to try doing cross country in my diagonal, of course, when I don't catch my tail of my thread in with Wow, bunches of you here today. I'm so glad. Well, let me start this thread all over again. So what I'm gonna do is, when I don't mess up, try and do cross country in my diagonal and see if I like that better or any different than stitching row by row because <laughs> oh, Leah, you're funny. <laughs> oh. I hope you guys all had a great New Year and a great Christmas. We did. Things here were quiet. Um, my daughter and son-in-law and the grandkids came Christmas afternoon and spent the afternoon with us, which was quite nice. The poor kids hadn't been home yet to see their stuff from Santa Claus because they were at the other grandma's on Christmas Eve and they all stayed overnight. So then before they go home, because both sets of grandparents, we live within a mile of each other, so we're all, we're close. And then they, sp they spend Christmas Eve at Adam's parents, and then they spend, they stay overnight there, then they come to us, around noontime on Christmas and have Christmas dinner with us. Then finally at about, for, finally for the kids at about four or five o'clock, they go home and finally get to see their stuff from 
Santa Claus. So they were excited and happy and had a wonderful time. And we opened presents and played games. And it was just a nice, fun day for everybody. And then, of course, New Year's. New Year's. Um, We really haven't done anything on New Year's Eve for more than many, many years. So uh, my husband was over in the living room and I was over here in the sewing room and he watched TV and then probably went to bed around 10, 30, 11 o'clock. And I was over here in the chat room until, wow, how late were we here, Jen? I was here till about one o'clock. Yeah, till about one o'clock in the morning, from about eight o'clock in the evening till one o'clock in the morning, and said, okay, now I think my eyes are a little tired. So I left, but I think people were in here for quite a while. Ah, Leah's here, hello, and Cynthia, and Jillian and oh my goodness, lots of people. Well, as I was going, started to say and then got sidetracked, you guys have all made me, not all of you, but a lot of you made me want to try doing cross country within the diagonal. So I wanted to give it a little bit of a shot to see to see if I like that. It gets... Oh my goodness, Jen, you slept about 12 midnight. Oh my heavens. Hi, Nancy. Happy New Year to you. Oh, I wanted to see if I like doing this cross country in the diagonal. Um... I did it a little bit on the diagonal before this, and I kind of like it, guys. You know, this this piece has been nothing but nothing but um, many many experiments on stitching styles, and you know, I think when you first start these designs, that's really what it's what it's all about is finding what what works for you. So I tend to want to experiment a little bit. So I'm, I'm ending a stitch here, so. <laughs> well, isn't that the truth, Jillian? If we didn't have to sleep, just think of all we could, of all we could get done. Oh my goodness. I actually did I actually got 700 and some stitches done yesterday. It was amazed. Yes, Leah, I think you're right. I think that's exactly, um, Leah's saying, the other Leah, there's two Leahs here, um, is saying about switching back and forth. 
between the two styles. And I agree. There are times when, when there's so much confetti that going um, row by row and even stitch by stitch is a lot easier um, than trying to do cross country. But when you're in a situation where you have quite a few stitches of the same color, um, it's easier to, it's faster to um, go cross country within the diagonal. So I agree. I think what I'm going to be doing is, is alternating back and forth. Um, Um, what I had been doing is only doing, but here I went a little bit further just because there were only a couple stitches. What I had been doing is cross countrying just within 10 rows, like 10 stitches wide and only down 10 rows, just like uh, Carolyn Mazio does in her method where she does just columns and works 10 rows at a time within the column. And I think that's what I want to do here on the diagonal is just go, just fill in 10 rows at a time and then park in the next, in the next block in that diagonal. So that's, that's what I'm trying. Unless of course in that next block in the diagonal, there's only like one or two one or two stitches where it is like kind of kind of dumb to park it and then go back and only do one stitch where'd that come from there we go so it's it's just playing around oh hi holly Oh, I'm sorry, I pronounced your name wrong. Gislani? 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 I'll get it right. Just ex I am terrible with pronunciation, so please, please forgive me for my <laughs> lack of pronouncing names correctly. Hi, Holly. Hopefully. And see, yes, sometimes I don't catch the thread and it pulls right out. Hi, Ari. So, how many of you guys are doing stitch alongs? Oh, not stitch alongs, doing challenges. Gilanai, Gilanai, Ah, now I think I got it. And I bumped the camera. Got it. Gilanai. See, I said I'm terrible. <laughs> Give me a face to remember, and I'm good. Names, not so much. So, are you guys doing the challenges? Mrs. Glutton for Punishment here signed up for several. Hi, Desiree, or Desiree. I joined, of course, doing the Dutch on the For the Love of Diagonal Cross Stitch group. And I thank Joyce so very, very much for setting that up for us. Um, then I joined, well, I was always a member of Full Coverage Fanatics, but then I decided to do the 20 in 20 and the 
20 and 20, and the national parks. So I'm going to do both of them. Should be fun. And I, fortunately, I think we'll be able we'll be able to like double dip so that say we're doing Dutch in the for the love of diagonal and then you're doing 2020 in full coverage you can count your stitches in I would think you can count your stitches in both Jen what you do is pick one of the routes um, I'm doing the last one, which is the addict one, because that has the most stitches. You have all year to do it, and for each destination, let me see, let me get my book here. I have it printed out so that I can. January. Okay. There's the light, the normal, and the addict, and for each destination, like when you go from Juneau, Alaska to Tallahassee, you stitch 3,028 stitches for the normal or 4,873 for the addict. I'm not sure what the cue there means for the light. I guess that's just flying. Uh, you're just flying, so you really don't have to do anything there. You go from Tallahassee to Atlanta, then the light you do 228 stitches, the normal you do 228 stitches, or the attic does 367. So you pick a column. You pick light, normal, or attic, and in that column is the number of stitches you have to do to reach that destination. When you reach those that number of stitches, you mark it as done and move down to the next. So that by the end of the year, if you're doing the, the addict, which is crazy nutball here, uh, I will have done 30,566 stitches. Now, if you do the national parks in full coverage fanatics, there you do 4,000 stitches for each park. And then at the end of the year, you have 100,000 stitches. So I would like to do the 100,000 stitches because then with any amount of luck, if I use Stitcher's Retreat for all 100,000 stitches, I should be, okay, right now I'm at 46.3% uh, 46 done, and I have 216, just about 217,000 stitches done, completed, and the total is 468,000. So if I can do another 100,000 stitches, I should be three, about three quarters of the way done and only have maybe another 150,000 to go. Right, Jen, full coverage fanatics 2020 and Dutch. Yeah, you can kill two birds with one stone. Absolutely, absolutely. So you can count them in R's, then the full coverage fanat, um, for the love of diagonal and you can also count them in the full coverage fanatics. So it isn't like it isn't like you have to do separate stitch counts for both. You can count them the stitches that you do for each one. Yeah, I just I just think it's fun to do and it keeps you well it helps keep me, where am I here, right there. It help keep, helps keep me motivated to um, 
to keep stitching. Like just, just the last two days, the first and the second. See, I keep my handy dandy little book here so that I can keep track. The, on the first and the second, I already stitched 1,500 stitches. So I made myself a little book. I just used one of these composition books. And inside, I listed my full coverage fanatics. Let's see if I can, oh, that light's going to, there we go. Full coverage fanatics so I can record my stitches so that I know when that one's done. I cut out the, the pages for the uh, national parks okay, and pasted those in. Then I ended up cutting out the, the path for Dutch. I also have that on my computer. Ah, oh, Desiree, you're knitting socks. Good for you. Then I listed my works in progress. I keep going the wrong way for the camera. Yeah, there's 10. And then I can do my finishes. And then I have a monthly tracker where I'll um, record, oops, wrong way what I'm stitching on that month and the days I stitched on it. And then I like to keep track of how many stitches on each project. So, yeah, I'm a nutball. So that's what I do. I just find it interesting. Well, first of all, you got, I gotta keep track for the challenges, but then I just find it interesting to see how much I actually did stitch. Um, I did it last year. Oh, Liv, you're making lace. Are you doing that? Um... Oh, what's it called? Battenberg lace? Or are you tatting? Just curious. I often, I always wondered about, um, I always admired people that can do the, the lace making. Um, I was often tempted to try it. I'm so organized. No, not really. It was just a spur of the moment thing to try and, to try and well, I wanted to try and keep track this year because I hadn't done such a good job of it last year. <laughs> but I start out very well organized, Desiree. However, will it last? I doubt it but I'm going to give it a shot again this year. <laughs> seven, seven, nine. Oh, you're doing shuttle tatting, Liv. Yes, I do shuttle tatting. Many, 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 many years ago, um, when I was married the first time, he had an aunt who did shuttle tatting. And I so, so wanted to learn so I spent an afternoon with her, and uh, she taught me the basics of how to tat. So I can do it. Um, but I never really, I can do, like, make like a, a long, line of lace but I can't do it when you have two balls and 
I haven't really I haven't really mastered that yet. But one of these one of these days when I'm not cross stitching, I might try it. Yeah, that's a good way to describe it, Liv. You're actually doing, if you do macrame, or if you've ever done macrame, how you make that half hitch knot, that's really what it's like. But it was fun. I, en I enjoyed, I really enjoyed doing it. I'm not messing up here. There we go. There we go. So, did any of you make plans or goals for projects for the new year? Or I should say for this year? I, I start out do or think I'm always going to do that, but then I end up um, <laughs> getting sidetracked all the time. But I think my one big my one big goal that I'd really, really like to stick to is to... is um, getting stitchers retreat, getting the 100,000 stitches in stitchers retreat so that with any amount of luck, I can actually have it finished in 2021 with any amount of luck. We'll see if that really happens. <laughs> I wish I would have kept better track so that I would have known how many stitches I did this year, but I really only started tracking it really faithfully about October. So it's hard to tell. Ah, sorry, I bumped. I bumped. So that's my big, that's my, my big goal for the year. So Stitcher's Retreat will be my, my main focus this year. I, that, I mean, that's the plan. Um, my other plan is to not be starting anything else and focus on what I, what I have started. Um, I have enough started to keep me busy for the rest of this lifetime. <laughs> I have um, that list of 10 that you kind of got a glimpse of. I have six of those are heaven and earth designs. So really, should I be starting any more? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Not if I want to actually finish something. Um, what I thought I would do is is um, have at least two as focal pieces or pieces that I will focus on for the year. Um, 
and switch back and forth between them. Uh, I think that will work because if my records for December were any indication of, of uh, how much I stitch, I, I stitched over 8,000 stitches in December and there was maybe about a week and a half that I didn't work on it. So if I can do 8,000 stitches in that amount of time, if I worked on it every day, I know I could go. If I would have worked on it every day, I probably would have reached 10,000 stitches. So if I can get to 10,000 stitches a month, every month, I should be able to do the 100,000 by October. Roughly guesstimating. However, will I make 10,000 stitches every month? Probably not, but you know, it's a goal. It's something to shoot for. Um, so what I thought I'd do with the National Parks um, challenge is switch between one other project and this one. and try and get, you know, a fair amount of stitching done. Now, I will have to say, doing this cross country within the diagonal and not having to change threads all the time, certainly, certainly is a bit faster than um, changing threads every other stitch. I need 8,333 stitches a month. Is that to get the 100,000? Because that would be highly doable. Thank God I'm retired. I couldn't do it if I wasn't retired. <laughs> it would not work. But if I do this way, you know, switching back and forth between um, stitching um, row by row in the high confetti areas and stitching cross country within the diagonal in other areas, I think, I think it should be easy. Hi, Angela. <laughs> I really think it should be easier because, aha, so to get the 100,000 I need to do, yeah, I think that's doable. And will give me time to do a little bit on something else and um, I joined the stitch along by I stitch with I stitch the burgundy band sampler so we got our first hello miss rose um, we got our first um, weeks homework today so we have a week to stitch that um, so if I can keep up with that in, I forget how many weeks it lasts, but then you have a real nice long uh, band sampler. So I'm looking forward to stitching that too. So 
Yes, I eat, sleep, and dream cross-stitch. Yes, I do. Now, I did, I am kind of paying attention here, and I do think my stitches are looking just as nice. Oh, I'm sorry, I keep bumping my phone. Um, just as nice doing this cross country uh, as they do going row by row. Oh, Angela, you started your first heaven and earth. Good for you. Now, you know, you know, we're going to want to see pictures in the group. So if you're not a member of the group, you need to join and post your pictures. Because we love, love, love to see pictures. But yeah, so I do think my stitches are looking just as good stitching this way. And another thing I've kind of sort of figured out is, and again, this is just my opinion. There's no rhyme or reason to it. Um, well, there is in my head a rhyme or reason, but your thread tension is important to have your stitches looking nice. However, <laughs> However, I do think your fabric tension has a whole lot to do with whether you get lines or not. I felt a knot. I felt a knot. Where is it? Oh, maybe not. Okay. I really think the tension of your fabric in your, whether it's a hoop or a scroll frame or a Q-snap or whatever you're using makes a big, big difference on um, on whether you get lines and how your stitching looks. I have found that the tighter my fabric is in the hoop, the nicer my stitches are all over, all around. So, I mean, you can take that for, for what it's worth. Give it a try. See if it makes a difference for you. Um, I do think it has, I mean, I always have preferred my, my fabric to, ah, my fabric to be extremely tight in whatever I'm whatever I'm stitching and that could be why I haven't had any problems with lines yeah Leah I I think I, I do really think that that makes a difference um, if your fabric is too loose then how can I explain it if it's too loose, I think you tend, there's that tendency for the fabric threads to get pulled together. If you're inconsistent with your tension, your fabric threads tend to get squished and then that's what can make a line. Whereas if you have it drum tight, like this is, I can bounce a quarter off of this. Um, I really do think that makes a huge, huge difference. Because um, really, I don't, what I just stitched, I stitched cross country. Up here, right above it, I stitched row by row. And I don't, I mean, I don't see a difference looking at it here in person. And if I look on the camera, I don't see, 
I don't see a um, difference there either. So, you know, it's, like I said, it's just my own personal opinion. It's worth giving, it's worth giving a try uh, to see if that's, if that works for you. Um, got to change threads here. It's just, it's just another thought on um, help preventing lines. I know I've, we've all seen some where you can see every, you can see every column line. Well, hello, Irene, and Happy New Year to you, too. Um, yes, Leah, I agree. Stitching. I, I tried stitching in hand, and I would love, love, love to be able to stitch in hand. Um, but I just can't get the tension. You know, there are people that stitch in hand, and their stuff looks fabulous. Um, um, case in point, and I met her not too terribly long ago, is Teresa Baird of Heartsease Designs. She does um, samplers, and she's doing samplers of all the original, she's designing a sampler for each of the original 13 colonies. Um, if any of you follow samplers, I don't know, um, but she just finished one uh, for Virginia, and it is absolutely, absolutely fantastic. Um, I stitched a lot of samplers, as you can see behind me, are just two. There's another 40 over in my living room. <laughs> and one day we'll take a walking tour um, of all my samplers that I stitched. Uh, but she stitches in hand. She stitches all her stuff in hand. She does not use a hoop. She does not use Q-snaps. She doesn't use scroll frames. And I want to tell you what, her stitching is out of this world gorgeous. Gorgeous. Um, she entered one of her first pieces that she designed into Woodlawn. Um, those of you, anybody on the East Coast has probably heard about Woodlawn, Woodlawn. It's um, just outside. It's a. It's was a plantation, and I hope I get this right. And somebody correct me if I'm wrong. If you know the real, the true history of it. It. George Washington's niece, I want to say. Lived on that plantation. And they have an annual needlework show. Uh, Nellie's Needlers, which I believe is the EGA Guild outside of Washington, um, is instrumental in um, putting on that needlework show. It's an annual show. It is very prestigious. Um, it has been going on for, let me see, 50, this is probably about the 57th year that it's gone on, that it um, has been put on. Um, it's a judged show, and it is judged by professional needlework judges. I believe they're judged... I believe they're EGA judges, um, and it's judged on workmanship. So what piece you stitch really doesn't have much of anything to do with whether you win, and you don't win an you don't win prize money or anything like that. You just win 
the ability to, ability to say I won at Woodlawn, that my stitching was um, outstanding enough to take a prize at Woodlawn. Um, Teresa Baird, for her original sampler design, won a first place ribbon for her stitching abilities. And she won one of the, there's first, second, and third place and honorable mention within all the categories, but then there are even higher awards, um, and I can't remember the names of them all, where it equates to best of show type things. And she, is, she also won in that, in that arena. Um, so she is a phenomenal stitcher and she stitches everything in hand. Yeah, I, Rose, I'm so envious that you can do that. Um, yeah, because me, not so much. It doesn't work. I, I have to, I have to use some kind of a hoop or actually I gravitated to to um, these nerge stand and hoops and I just teetotally love it, love it. But back to Woodlawn, I, I was talking about this in the stitching room the other night, um, New Year's Eve when a lot of us were in there. Um, I actually won three awards total, no? Three, yeah, three awards total at Woodlawn. I won a second place for my grandson's first sampler. I got, ooh, come back up here. There we go. I got a second place for my piece of Hardanger that I had entered. And not last year, the year before, I got a first place for my, um, okay, why am I coming apart here? There we go. I got a first place for my um, long dog sampler called Dew Bears. Um, So I'm, I'm rather proud to be able to say I won awards at Woodlawn. Because um, like I said, on the East Coast it is, well, I think it really is one of the most prestigious shows. Uh, the length of my frame, I'm not using, I'm using a hoop. I'm using a Nerge, it's called Nerge Hoop. Um, as I'm tightening things here because I keep, it keeps coming loose, this one. Um, I kind of gave up on my scroll frames. In fact, I actually got rid of all my scroll frames um, because I found them not to be portable enough for me. I Stop it. There's where it's coming loose. Okay. Um, I like my stitching to be um, portable, that I can um, move around with it because I don't always stitch over here in my sewing room. I frequently, I'll get you back in shape here in a sec. There we go. I frequently, um, I like to be able to take it over into the living room in the evening and, and stitch over there with my husband while we watch TV. So I don't, I don't use a scroll frame anymore. Um, like I said, I did get, I did rehome them. Um, what I use now is this Nerge 
It's called N-U-R-G-E stand and I use their hoops. Um, you can find them on eBay if you just type in NURGE, N-U-R-G-E, embroidery stand. Um, and I will forewarn you, you will get frustrated because it will keep cha changing NURGE, N-U-R-G-E, to NURSE, N-U-R-S-E. <laughs> and it takes a little bit of huh, patience and retyping to finally get it to recognize the word nerge. Um, yeah, Desiree, I agree with you. I, I like, I just like being able to take it to different places. And you know, and you go to stitching retreats, which I which I go to, in fact, we'll be going to one in spring at Salty Yarns. So to um, lug a big scroll frame around, because this would have taken a 40 inch scroll frame. So that's just not conducive to taking a taking to a retreat with you either so I just opted to go this route and I have it on a table now and I have it counterbalanced with a brick or two so that it doesn't um, tip for because I have to have it at a really different angle to be able to stitch and have my camera focused or my phone focused so that you guys can see it. Um, I do have the tabletop version ordered and it should be here, I don't know, within the week, I believe, I hope, because that has a much heavier base, so I won't have to counterweight it and it has a bit more uh, options to uh, position it. Um, but this one that I'm working off now is actually their premium seat stand. Um, they have one that is very much like the Hardwick Manor fanny frame, where it's just one post and you have a stem that goes down in to the post. Um, And, and that one's okay. I just liked this because it has more options to angle and position it better. I, I mean, I really, I really love this stand. I really, really do. Um, it's so, you know, you, I can, you sit with it underneath your thigh and you can, I can stitch all day. Yeah, I, I, I really enjoy, really enjoy stitching with it. So that's kind of what I do these days. I don't know, I just found scroll frames to be too cumbersome. Nancy, on my long dogs, I only used one color. Um, my do bears, I did in a in I think it was DMC five hundred. It was very dark bluish green. Um, I was actually shocked that, that it took a first place. I, I truly was because I would not. I personally would not have given it a first place, but if they're going to give it to me, I'm going to take it. <laughs> I was really, really happy. Um, I did Molong Rouge and I did that in red. I believe it was 814. I did Renaissance. I did that in 
a blue, and I want to say it was one of the 930s. Uh, it might have been 931 or 932. I don't quite remember. It's been that long. And I did uh, Paradigm Lost. And that's also in a blue. Again, it was probably the 930s. Bye, Desiree. Thanks for stopping in. Um, let me see. I think those are the, those are the only four long dogs I've done. Um, Death by Cross Stitch has been yelling at me uh, to stitch that one. Except I'm afraid to. Not because I can't handle the design. But I'm afraid that I'm going to start it and get bored with it because it's all one color. And after doing these heaven and earth designs and such a challenge and color changes and all of that, I really, really enjoy stitching on these. And I'm a little scared that if I start to um, start one that's just one color or even just two colors, I'm going to get T totally bored you know that was the reason that um, I had two uh, full coverage samplers started um, Hannah Carter by the Scarlet Letter and Manifesto by the Scarlet Letter and their full coverage however I found them new homes because there's so much solid stitching i would pull it out to think okay i'm going to work i'm going to work on this i want to get these done and i'd stitch on them for about an hour and i would go i'm not having this this is too boring i can't do this anymore so they have been rehomed and are in a very loving home at this time and i hope I hope uh, she is enjoying them um, and will finish them because I know I can't. So for that reason, I, I as much as Death by Cross Stitch calls me, I'm just not so sure that I want to that I want to stitch it. Yeah, I hear you, Leah. I, I, I know exactly how you feel. I'm just, I don't know. I don't know. You know, I can, I can see the progression in my stitching over the years. I mean, I started stitching back in, well, I was just out of nursing school and in my very first job as a nurse in 1972 when I learned how to cross stitch. And I would at that time stitch very simple things. And at that time, there wasn't a lot to be had cross stitch wise. And yeah, you know, I, can, I can see how my taste changed as things became available. And then, um, Let's see, I, I had, in fact, I was doing a lot of the um, Told in the Garden Angels at that point in time. And, you know, I had progressed from the very, very simple to more involved things about like, like the angels and whatever. Um, and I even, I worked at a state hospital. It was a state mental hospital for 15 years, the first 15 years of my nursing career. And I left there and opened a shop for a few years and took some classes through the National Needlework Association. And that's where my mentor 
helped me perfect what I was doing with Hardanger. And I got stuck in that world for ooh, a good, a good 10 years, almost 10 years, where that's all I did. And that was very, of course, monochromatic because you were using just one color of pearl cotton to stitch that. And a lot of those pieces I stitched and, and gave away. There's a few that I have here um, that I made for myself and, and we use them every day. So they're used and washed and they're fine and wonderful. And then about 2004, I started cross-stitching again. So I was so used to just having one ball of pearl cotton. And when I started cross-stitching again, I went for all the monochromatics. And that's why I started and I stitched long dogs and I was very happy to stitch long dogs in one color. Because it was easy. It was only one color of thread. You didn't have to change color. You were merely stitching along and you, you know, I finished them pretty quickly. It didn't take me too long at all. And then I found samplers. And a lot of the samplers I initially did were one color. Um, this would have been, yeah, the early 2000s, 2006, 7, 8, maybe up to 2010. I stitched a lot of samplers for uh, Sabine of European Reproduction Samplers. I stitched a lot of hers. Um, and then sent her pictures, and those are the ones that that she used. Well, myself and Donna Lemos um, stitched a lot of the models that she used on her website when she first started uh, with with her own website. Um, so you can see a lot of a lot of my samplers there, and those are ones that are hanging in my living room. Um, so then we. There was one year where we stitched, oh my goodness, it, w it was at least six Quaker samplers, in addition to other things that we stitched. Um, there was one year where we did a lot of little red samplers. Um, so those are hanging over there. And then I broadened out into samplers from Scarlet Letter and um, GGR designs and I can't even remember all the ones that that we stitched um, but they're all hanging in my living room at this point in time well then you know you can only stitch so many or at least I could only stitch so many samplers and I kind of got saturated with them and then I found this Stitcher's Retreat as a freebie on Heaven and Earth. And I fell in love. So now I have come full circle. I forgot to tell you, back in the late 70s, early 80s, I stitched five different um, charts by... Barbara and Cheryl, okay? It was, they were called Sunday Morning, Church Street, Queen Street Alley, South Battery View, and Iron Gate, I think was the last one. But they were all full coverage charts. Um, didn't know anything about stitching in this method at the time. So what I did was um, I would make copies of the chart and I would cut out maybe 30 by 30 stitch sections and I would stitch that section. And then I would, when I got close to the edge of that section, I'd look at the next 
section that butted against it and could I run colors into that and that's how I stitched those I had no idea about this kind of stitching at all at that point in time so that was you know basically what I'm doing now and as I said then I had taken the classes with TNNA I went into the world of Hardanger I came back to monochromatic then I started doing samplers now I've come full circle and I'm back to doing a full coverage piece again so it, it does go to show that your tastes change and you know you can come full circle <laughs> oh Leah you did that too yeah I, I mean I didn't know how else to tackle that kind of a project that was full coverage except to divide it into sections and stitch that section and then what I did was I had we had a, we had a stationary store down in the town I live in is just this little little hick town really <laughs> And there was a stationery store there. It's no longer there. The, the man retired, and I'm not even sure if he's living anymore. But I would go down, and I'd say to Henry, okay, Henry, I need every color highlighter that you have. So I bought one of every color. And then what I would do in this, this little 30 by 30 section that I had, or yeah, the 30 by 30 section that I had, I would go through and I'd highlight all the stars. And then I'd stitch all the stars. Then I'd take another color highlighter and I'd highlight all the S's and I'd stitch all the S's. Then I'd take another color highlighter and I just keep doing that until I filled that section. And then I'd move to the next section and I'd start doing the same thing. I didn't I didn't know any other way to tackle stitching that at that point in time. So that's, that's how I stitched them. Now we have Pattern Keeper. What a godsend. What a godsend. But, you know, I've come, I've really come full circle in what I stitch and I found new, improved, wonderful ways to stitch. And I, I love it. And it's, what can I say? It's, it's what I do. I, I don't know what I'd do if I didn't do this, especially be, being retired. I really, I really don't know. I would be bored silly. And that's why I don't think I could do a monochromatic anymore because I would be bored silly. And that's such a short trip. <laughs> such a short trip. So, yeah, this is, this is what I do. Well, I guess I've had you guys here for over an hour. Anybody have any questions I can answer for you or? <laughs> oh, Holly, that's, that's good. Full coverage and color. You are so right. Gail, you know what? Retirement will allow you to do that. Um, I, I think that's why I enjoyed monochromatic when I worked because my job was just so stressful. Uh, it, it was, mm. some days I would just come home in tears because of, of the stress. I was, I was an assistant director of nursing in a long-term care facilities. Um, and it was stress. So monochromatic was the way to go. That was relaxing. I didn't have to think. I could stitch and stitch and stitch one color. Now I'm retired and I need a bit more stimulation. Nicole, how many wor works in progress do I have? 
um, 10 at this point in time. Um, six of them are heaven and earth. I have, let's see. Let's see. What do we have here? I have Stitcher's Retreat. Oh, your daughter's an RN. Oh, good for her. We need more. They need more because us old fogies, <laughs> like me, I'm speaking for myself, are retiring. You know, I retired at, I've been retired for just turn seven years. Um, I retired at not quite 62 so and for seven years I've been retired it's I just couldn't do it anymore but my works in progress are Stitcher's Retreat Timeless Elegance and that's one that Barb and I are stitching together Log Cabin Home um, started that one because my husband likes it yes you can Angela yes you can send me an email uh, for the code to get into the stitching room. Absolutely. And bless your heart. Angela, where are you from? I'm being nosy, but I'm trying to think. I knew I uh, of an Angela Arntz. And I'm trying to remember which nursing home I was at Oh my God, 2059, oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, the poor guy. I probably won't be here anymore till then since I was born in 1951. <laughs> Unless I live to be over 100, God bless. But Angela, yes, email me or send me a message. Um, Fractal Six, that I'm stitching with Barb and our friend in Virginia, and they are both, oh, you're in Nebraska. Okay, there's an Angela Arntz local to me, I'm almost pretty sure. Isn't that funny how names, they trigger something, but yes, but send me a, send me a message, I will send you the code, absolutely. Yeah. Isn't retirement wonderful? Absolutely wonderful. Best decision I ever, ever made. Not that, don't get me wrong, I loved what I did. I totally loved what I did. Um, however, nursing over the years went from an RN providing hand, hands-on care and working with patients, residents to, if you're an RN, you're probably management and a paper pusher. And anymore, it wasn't what I went into nursing for. The good thing about being in management, though, was it allowed me to work a little longer because back in the day, back in the day, we didn't have all the mechanical lifts and all of that good stuff. Um, and whew, wow. I did my back in. So it it couldn't do all that heavy work anymore. So I was glad for a management position because that allowed me to be able to work a whole lot longer because I wasn't on my feet all the time. Yes, Holly, you're absolutely right. It went from patient centered to record centered. It and the sad part of it is it didn't matter what you physically did or it felt like it matters 
but it felt like it didn't matter what you physically did as long as it was on paper. Because if it wasn't on paper, you didn't do it. And that, that is so sad and so heartbreaking because residents, patients got lost in that shuffle. And that's, that's, just, that's just sad and it's just wrong. Oh, Liv, you have a long, long way to go. Bless your little heart. Oh, Jackie, thank you. I enjoy doing these. If it wouldn't be for you guys, I'd have given this up quite a while ago. <laughs> but you guys have been so fantastic, so great, and so encouraging and supportive. And I, I just can't thank you all enough. I, I, I just can't. It, you have all made this so much fun. And I hope that, that you're all able to get something out of this, you know, it, whether it be, you know, a little tip here or there, um, how to thread a needle, um, how to do your stitching, uh, or whatever. I mean, I've thrown out a lot of little tips <laughs> over the course of these videos. And I think you've all watched me stitch a lot of different ways. Um, yeah, I think it's a common problem, Leah, all over. And it is, it's really sad. It is, it breaks my heart because it isn't what I went into nursing for. It, it really isn't. I went into nursing to, to uh, take care of people and be with people. And by the end of my career, I wasn't doing that. I was managing people. And that's worse. <laughs> oh, Holly, so sorry to see you go. I hope to see you soon also. Jackie, so did I. I purchased another magnifier for over in my living room. Here in my stitching room, I have a Dazor light that I use. Um, in fact, I'm not even using any magnification today, believe it or not, which is quite different. But for my living room, I, I ordered a, I think it's called a Bright Tech. Um, and I love that one. It just sits by my chair. Um, and I just can bend it over and put it right here, right on my stitching. It's enough light. It's wonderful. Uh, no, Jackie, I was born in 1951. So I'm a little bit older than you think. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, I'm born on a holiday, believe it or not or at least a holiday in the United States. Um, I was born on the 4th of July, 1951. Yeah. So my, old, my saying is, <laughs> I was born with a bang and I'll go out like a bump on a log. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and let me tell you what, being born on the 4th of July is kind of really stinky because everybody is um, celebrating the holiday and birthdays kind of get forgotten. And But however, I did for many years think that those fireworks were just for me. <laughs> even though they weren't, even though they weren't, but they had fireworks every year on my birthday. <laughs> yes, Bright Tech. That's what I that's what I have, Jenny. Yes, it's wonderful. 
Oh, Leah, you were born on July the 6th? Ah, oh, it's just Ju July. People are good folks. <laughs> I think um, if, ev if any of you watch Vanna, uh, Twisted Stitcher, her birthday is also July the 6th. Yeah. Yeah. Good month to be born in. Yeah. Angela, you're July 20th. See, another July birthday. Good time to be born. In 1964, okay. Oh, 1949. 1949, that's when my husband was born. Uh-huh. He was born on March the 5th in 1949. Angela, you're 1961. Yeah. Yeah. I think, how can I say? I've noticed stitch, a lot of stitchers are probably in our age group, but it is so great to see a lot of you younger gals and guys stitching because seriously we need to keep this alive and and that's the other reason i like to do these videos and and if who just said that's where did i see it <gasps> yes loretta you do share december 9th with my grandson yes that's his that little stinker just turned six, and oh my goodness, is he a trip. Oh, Jen, you were born in 1969. That's the year I graduated from high school, 1969. Yeah, I think a lot of stitchers tend to be a little older, but especially on YouTube, I'm seeing more and more younger people stitching and i think that is just so so great so wonderful because like i said we need to we need to keep this this craft going um yeah i can't advocate for it enough because like i said right now it's my life it's what i do it's yeah to get people to stitch Yes. Yeah. And and we can all live good for you. See, Johanna, December 9th, another good birthday. That's your son. Okay. Live your 97. Good for you. Good for you. And you're still stitching. I am so proud of you. So very proud of you. Hope you have many more years to stitch because we love it. We love it. Yeah. I wonder, often wondered about that, Leah. Uh, in other countries are do people stitch do people stitch the same kind of projects like we stitch here in the states oh you were born in 1997 oh <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> oh my god Oh, see, that's the, the magic of the internet. You misread things. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay. These old minds, you know what they, they They work funny sometimes. Here I thought you were 97 years old, and that's wonderful. But born in 1997. 
That's too funny. But Leah, I often wondered about about what kind of projects do they stitch? <laughs> are are projects like we have here in the states readily available over there? Or do you have to to do you have to buy them from places here and have them shipped over. I know I see quite a few floss tubers now um, promoting promoting some shops, European shops. Um, and I'm not sure where they are. I know, is it my bobbin? Somebody's promoting my bobbin. And I'm not sure where that is. Um, Liv is our stitch baby. Oh, that's all right. We keep her. <laughs> we keep her. Yeah, that would be a neat idea to do a video on that. That would be a great, because I'd like to see that. I, I'm just curious what is available to you folks, say, in Germany, as opposed to what's available here in the United States. I, and I think you're right. I think my bobbin is Russian. And I know they reached out to several people that do floss tube um, to promote their designs. They've, they've, they've given several people, several floss tubers um, free ones to evaluate and then when that person promotes them on their channel, they give those viewers a special discount, I believe. Um, I haven't really checked them out, um, mainly because I have more than enough here to keep me busy. I really, I really, really, really don't need to buy anymore. In fact, unless it's something that really really grabs me and says, you really, really, really got to stitch this. I've kind of stopped buying except for supplies, you know, floss or, or thread or, you know, things of that nature. But other than that, I really don't, um, I really have kind of stopped buying things because I know I won't get to them. Pardon me, but I see a thread poking through here that needs to go to the other side. There we go. Here's another one. Yeah, I, I don't, I mean, I have so much. I, I even downsized my stitching stash a couple years ago and got rid of Got rid of a ton of stuff. Um, yeah, did I buy after that? Yeah, I did. I bought a lot of heaven and earth designs because I'm a wackadoodle. Um, but for the most part, anymore, I I'm not buying because I I can't I can't get it done. I w I won't be able to get it done. Um, I'm figuring I got two more years on this, on just this piece. So, and I have five others going besides. That's going to last me the rest of my life. Why do I need to buy? Unless it's something that I can stitch quickly and get it done, um, I'm not going to buy it. However, I did join that eye stitch design for the burgundy sampler but that was because i totally loved it it was gorgeous it's gorgeous it's a long band linen banding and then it has the design is going to be all in burgundies 
or in burgundy, a, a red, and it's I love, I love red thread on white fabric. If it has to be monochrome, it, I love red on white. <laughs> yeah, Joanna, I, I don't sew anymore, but I do occasionally crochet and I did buy a kit to knit a shawl that I thought I'd give to my daughter if I ever get to that. But you know what? I get so so involved in my cross stitching that I don't know. Maybe I spent money on that too that it's going to sit here in the basket. Maybe I hopefully, hopefully I will get to it and um what I should do is what Jan Hicks does and say, I'm going to work on it for 30 minutes a day or an hour a day and at least put some time in it. Um, but again, I get so hooked. <laughs> oh, hi, Sherry. On my long dogs, I, yeah, on my long dogs, I um, did them on 28 count Lugana over one with one strand of floss. except for Moulin Rouge, which was the first one I did when I started cross-stitching again. And that I did on 28 count Lugana with over two with two strands of floss. Um, and with that being said, I will say at this point in my life, I do not like stitching with two strands of floss. I prefer one. What can I say? It's just the way it rolls these days. And probably that's because of these heaven and earth designs. I got so used to stitching with one. I, I just don't like stitching with two and mainly I mean, the loop start is awesome, and it would be fantastic to not have to find a, a way to start threads because you could just use that loop. But I don't like the way two stitches lay. It's, I don't like to have to do all that fussing to get them to lay side by side. So I don't stitch with two, two strands anymore. Yes, Leah, I did have a bit more time to collect things than you did. And oh, my, 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 did I have quite a bit collected. I really have narrowed it, narrowed it down. And I really still can narrow it down more. Oh, excuse me. Sneezes. But I really could, I really, really, really could. Purge some more things. So there might be some more um, mystery bags in the future of purgings. So, well, guys, we're looking at an hour and a half here. So, um, ah, thank you. <laughs> I'm good for at least one sneeze a day called clear the head <laughs> so I think what I'm going to do guys is say try and end this but what I do want to say is thank you all so much for a wonderful year for all your support
you guys have been so supportive and so encouraging. And if it wouldn't be for that, I wouldn't keep doing these. Um, but I enjoy, I enjoy every minute. And in all honesty, I like these live ones a whole lot better than pre-recording something. Um, I think what I might do going forward this year is um, doing a pre-recorded Stitch With Me once a week and then doing a live show once a week. Um, cause in all honesty, it is a little difficult <laughs> to actually stitch and read your comments and talk at the same time. Um, so it would be, it would be a little easier for me to do a pre-recorded stitching session and then doing a show live where I can read your comments, talk back and forth with all of you, and um, spend some time that way. Um, so I'm going to look at trying to do, to do that um, going forward from now on. So uh, it was a little hard. <laughs> I got kind of got out of my my routine there for a little bit over the holiday so hopefully we will get back on track with that and um start that uh, today's friday so uh, i will start that next week i can't tell you what days it's going to be um but as i said you guys are the best i love you all it is so much fun um, to do these with you. And if anybody on here is not in the Diagonal Stitching group and not on Facebook to be able to join that group, if you'd like to join us in the... Oh, hi, Joyce. <laughs> if you'd like to join us in the stitching room, please either send me a message on put it on here um, in the comments down below and give me a place to send and i will send you the code and the directions to get into our zoom stitching room which is was so much fun um i'm just going to move this back a little bit we had a blast in there on new year's eve um, it was it was really so much fun there were about uh, 18 of us in there um, yeah there were about 18 of us in there we stitched I came on about eight o'clock in the evening we stitched till well I was there till one o'clock in the morning and I'm pretty sure there were stitchers there even after that. Um, Jackie, just, just go on to Facebook and search for the love of diagonal cross-stitching. That's the main cross-stitch group. And the... Um, the group for the stitching room is called, oh geez, what did I name it? Oh my goodness. Wait, I'll look. Oh my gosh. Zoom, Zoom virtual cross stitching, I think it is. Let me look here. Oh, isn't that terrible when you can't remember the names of your own groups? Zoom virtual cross stitching. Um, if you are in for the love of diagonal cross stitching, 
Yeah, there were 18 of us, Jen, weren't there? It was fun. And poor Jen, she didn't sleep <laughs> before she came on and to stitch with us. And how many hours were you up? It had to be like 24 or more. She was getting ready to start her, prepping to start her golden kite design. So she was not stitching, but winding floss. <laughs> You're welcome, Jackie. Yes, just join um, Zoom Virtual Cross Stitching. And if you join that group, if you're a member of the Diagonal Stitchers, you're already approved. Um, if you're not a member of that one, you can still join Zoom Virtual Cross Stitchers, but I will need to approve you and um, I will... I try to keep up with that as best I can. And the directions, the number, the code number to get into the Zoom group is pinned to the top of that group. I didn't want to just put it out there for everybody and anybody to get in there because you never... You can never be too cautious when you're dealing with the internet. Yes, Leah, do join. We had such fun. And those that were in there got special um, surprises. I did, a, I did four drawings and gave away four grab bags. So nobody knows what they're getting. Uh, by the way, anybody that is here that was in that group, uh, in, the, in the room on New Year's Eve, your packages went out in the mail today. So you should be getting them probably the beginning of next week, according to the tracking information that I have. <laughs> yeah, Jenny, it was I I felt so bad for you that you were up all those hours, but boy, you were a trooper, but I could tell when I left you were getting really really tired. Um Well, yes, live, go on Zoom and you know, just hang out there and And uh, it's an addiction. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. But it's so fun. It is so fun. Every time I did there for a while, didn't get on as much as I should have. Um, but again, I will be better about that. And every time I've been there, we have had just so much fun. And if anyone needs help with anything, you know, that's an easy way uh, to be able to help you all because it's it's live. It's just like we're sitting in a room together talking and you know, if you can hold something up to the screen that I can see it, um, hopefully I can help you to uh, fix or give you an option for what you could do or whatever. Um, <laughs> yes uh, send me a message jen's creation wall send me a message and i will will give you the code okay um i don't want to put it out here on youtube um this is a private group it is a a private room so to speak uh but anybody that watches my YouTube videos or is in either of my groups is more than welcome to join us. Um, like I said, you just have to be careful because we don't want trolls and, and um, you know, some people that, there's people out on the internet that just aren't so nice. Um, and that's unfortunate. 
and I do like to be able to screen who's who's coming in um, just for that reason because it's a happy place it's supposed to be a happy place it's a place where um, Oh, okay, <laughs> Jen, you had me confused there for a minute. Um, it's a place where we should all be able to come and stitch and relax and have a good time. Um, I, you know, I don't, I don't want it to be a place that um, people have to fear being criticized or put down or bullied or those kinds of things because I won't put up with that. There's no reason for that. It's, we all have a love of stitching and that's what I want that place to be, a love of stitching and a place to share and, and spend time with each other just like we're sitting in a room at a retreat. Um, that's what it needs to be. So those of you that are watching my YouTube and want to join us in the room. If you um, send me a message, you can send it to needlebug, N-E-E-D-L-E-B-U-G-G, -G, at gmail.com. Um, and then I will send. Now, Please make sure that you are a subscriber to this channel because I will check that. If you are not a subscriber, I will not send you the code. Again, it's because we can't be too careful. And I would prefer that it's for subscribers to this channel only. So I know there are people that watch my channel that do not subscribe. And that's certainly your choice. But if you'd like to join in on our virtual stitching, please do subscribe. And if you enjoy my channel and you would like to see more and be part of these uh, live sessions and be notified when, they, when I uh, go live, please do subscribe. Uh, and hopefully you, know, hopefully you like what you see and you want to come back for more and have fun with all of us. Yes, Jen, you can do it on a laptop. Um, you, um, I'm not sure if you can get Zoom on the apps. If you're on a laptop, I'm not sure if you'll find Zoom in the app store or if you have to go to their website, but you can put it on your laptop because that's often what I will use is my laptop because I use my tablet, my tablet to stitch. So if you send me an email, please um, say that you heard it here on my YouTube station and please make sure that you are a subscriber because if you're not, then you're gonna be out of luck, <laughs> so to speak. So, oh my goodness, guys, I think we're going on how long here? Almost two hours. So, I think what I'm going to do now is, yeah, I think go to the website, Leah's right, go to the website and just download it from there. It's an easy download. And once you have it downloaded, um, what you're going to say, what you're going to select is join a meeting. And then it's going to ask you for the, for the number. And the number that I will give you looks like a phone number. It looks like an area code, three digits, and then four digits. Um, and you will just type that in and um, that will get you there. Linda, yes, I use the round nerd hoops here. I can, let me get my bricks off my stand and I can show you a little bit better. Yeah, this right here. Oh no, too many cords, Mr. Bill. <laughs> this right here is what I use, okay? And let me tell you what, 
and then the stand I have like this sitting on a table so that I can get to it. But this is all fully, these are all fully adjustable. You can set it however you like um, and whatever works for you. I love, love, love this stand. It is, and this is the sit on one, okay? This part, This part you sit on, it goes underneath your thighs, okay? And then you position this where you want it to be able to stitch comfortable. And in all honesty, I can stitch on this for hours sitting in my recliner chair. Piece of cake, it's wonderful. And I ordered the um, tabletop version, which can also uh, be used as a floor version um, that the base to it is quite a bit heavier to use this on my table what I had to do is get two bricks <laughs> to keep it in place um, but the one I have ordered and should be coming hopefully maybe by the end of this week uh, is a lot heavier I'm certain it's a lot heavier because the shipping alone was $60 to the United States. However, it was worth it. It was totally worth it. No complaints. Um, I'm looking forward to getting it uh, because that's gonna make setting up for these a whole lot easier, a whole lot easier. Um, in fact, Linda, I even prefer the Nurge hoops to the Hardwick Manor hoops. I have my fabric totally drum tight in this hoop. It's, it's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. I love it. I love it. In fact, <laughs> Oh, I, I am such an all or nothing person. What can I tell you? All or nothing. I have not only ordered the tabletop stand to these, I will then have, I ordered, so that I have every size of their hoops. See, all or nothing. What can I say? What can I say? It's just the way we roll here. <laughs> ah, it is what it is. But try them out, see if you like them. Um, I started out with the Hardwick Manor one, uh, which is fine. It, there's nothing wrong with that, except the only thing I did not like about that is the fact that I couldn't, I couldn't position it that it was close enough to me because it's just that one pedestal and you're kind of, yep, it is what it is. And I would end up having to actually tilt the whole thing to get it close enough to where I could stitch with it comfortably. Where this, I can adjust it to whatever is going to work for me. So that's why I went this route. I love it. What can I say? So... With that, I want to thank you all one more time for just being the wonderful people that you are, for all your support, for all your encouragement, for liking my videos, for spending time with me this past year, and I hope you will continue to spend time with me this coming year. If you are not a subscriber, please subscribe so that you get notified when, when I'm going live and when I do videos again. Um, I enjoy having each and every one of you here and talking with each and every one of you. It's fun. It's, it's you guys that keep me motivated The Facebook address is for the love of diagonal cross stitching 
as well as Zoom virtual stitching room. Got it, Libby? Uh, Jackie? Okay, for the love of diagonal cross stitching. And here I'll even, let me see here. Uh, let me see if I can type it in the comments. Then I learn how to type. My hands are used to and Zoom virtual stitching room. There you go. There you go. So, anyway, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being such a great group of people and so much fun to stitch with and I will look for you again here and I will look for you in the Zoom stitching room and hopefully we can spend some more great time together in the coming year and with that I'm going to say goodbye and I love you all and have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful new year. So, see you next time.